We've enhanced the H-alpha signal in the RGB image and in the luminance image, so now we're going to delinearize the two images so that we can combine them. We'll do this using histogram transformation and STF. We turn on track view, activate the image, and copy the STF settings over to the histogram transformation window. Then we apply the process to the image and disable the STF. Now we do the same with the luminance image. We copy the STF settings over to the histogram transformation window, then apply the process to the image and disable the STF. Now the two images have a similar brightness and contrast adjustment. We can check this by looking at the lightness channel of the color image. The main differences between the two images are in the brightest areas of the nebula. We need to make sure that these areas aren't saturated in the red channel because we are increasing the brightness in these parts of the image. Now that the two images have been delinearized, we can do the LRGB composition. So, let's go to the Channel Management section and open Channel Combination. Here we select the CIE Lab color space, uncheck all the channels except L, and add the luminance image. Now we apply the process to the color image. The LRGB composition offers a number of advantages. The first is that it adds volume to the nebula because in the areas where the H-alpha is most intense, the brightness increases. This benefits the composition of the photograph. The second advantage is that the noise level is reduced in the darker background areas. However, there's an issue with the bright stars. Dark rings have appeared around the centers of these stars. Let's look at why this happens. If we go back to the luminance image in its linear state, we see the bright stars as circles with a distinct, much brighter centers. This is because the stars are much more saturated in the luminance image than in the H-alpha image. So, when we combine the two images, we get the H-alpha star peak on top of the saturated areas of the other image. We can prevent this effect using a star mask that selects the bright stars. This mask is easy to make. All we need to do is go back to the linear luminance image before it was combined with the H-alpha and create a copy. We'll call this image Star Mask. This mask selects all the bright stars. First, we need to adjust the brightness of this image because, if you look closely, the brightness of the saturated areas is around 0.7. Let's set the highlight's clipping point to 0.7. Now, the brightness of the saturated stars is 1. Now, we're going to apply this mask to the RGB image and invert it. This means that the red areas won't be included in the LRGB composition. Let's go back to the last state of the luminance image after delinearization and redo the LRGB composition in a new preview, this time with the mask applied. Now we've got rid of the dark rings. However, as the stars are very large in the luminance image, the halos have got wider. To prevent this, we need to grow the star mask. 
we're going to do this using morphological transformation. In the Structuring Elements section, we select a size of 9 by 9 pixels and a circular structure. And here, in the Operator dropdown, we select Dilation. Now, we're going to use the Convolution tool to smooth the mask. As we make changes to the mask, PixInsight updates it on the image. This allows us to see how well we're selecting the star halos. If we go back in the mask history, the mask is updated on the image it's being applied to. This means we can adjust the mask dilation and smoothing to our liking. Let's apply channel combination again with the updated mask. Now the mask has helped to reduce the halos. The composition is much better, but the star halos are still growing a little. If we dilate the mask again, we'll protect all these stars more effectively. Now we're going to do the LRGB composition again in another preview. With this mask, the LRGB composition doesn't have any negative impact on the image. This is the original LRGB composition where we have the problems with the dark rings and the halos. This is the composition where the luminance image is only blocked in the centers of the bright stars to avoid the dark rings. This is the composition with the dilated mask to stop the star halos from getting bigger. And this is the composition with the twice dilated mask to completely block the star halos. Now we have an LRGB composition that doesn't affect the bright stars, that has a greater variety of tones within the bright nebula, and with reduced noise in the darkest areas. Now that we've defined the process, we can apply it to the main view. Finally, to mitigate the telescope's chromatic aberration, we're going to reduce the blue halos around the bright stars. This step is quite subjective and should never be a replacement for good data acquisition. In this case, we would probably need to change the filter set to one that blocks out violet light. But let's see what we can do. The first step is to create a mask that selects the blue halos around the stars. We do this by subtracting the red channel from the blue channel. To refer to a color channel of the target image, we write $t followed by the channel number in square brackets. The blue channel is 2, and we subtract the red channel, which is channel 0. The star's halos are brighter in the blue channel, so subtracting the red channel isolates those blue halos. Now we create a new image, which we'll call Star Mask Blue and it's going to be a grayscale image. We apply pixel math to the color image, and now we have a mask with the blue halos. We apply the mask to the color image. Here we can see that the mask has selected the blue halos. Now we apply a histogram transformation in the blue channel. As you can see, the histogram transformation reduces the blue halos around the bright stars. The halos are quite dark in the mask, so we can apply this histogram transformation several times to get the right effect. 
If we compare the result of the two iterations with the original image, we can see that the halos have been reduced. But remember, this is a very subjective step that affects the color of the stars. It should never be a replacement for improving the data acquisition. Finally, we apply the process to the main view. And here's the finished image.